Let's get more analysis on this now by bringing in Matthew Breiser, who's the former U.S. ambassador to Azerbaijan. He joins me live on the line from New York. Welcome to you, Mr. Ambassador. Let's just start with the words that we heard a few moments ago coming from the U.N. Secretary General, Antonio Guterres, who, who said, wars rage on with no clue how they will end, which I, I took as tantamount admission that the UN just simply doesn't have the powers to stop the global conflicts we're seeing at the moment. Realistically, is there only the United States that has the power to stop Israel? Well, I, I, first of all, I totally agree with Secretary General Gutierrez. I mean, the, and with President Erdogan, that the UN Security Council is broken when you have one of its permanent members violating the UN Charter so, so egregiously in Ukraine. Um, I, I, I don't know that the U.S. has the power to compel Israel to do anything. I mean, Israel is a, is a democratic country, and uh, in general, the operation to destroy Hamas is quite popular among Israeli voters, even if they believe that Prime Minister Netanyahu is not doing enough uh, to free the remaining hostages held by Hamas. Uh, the U.S. does have, of course, theoretically, lots of leverage over Israel, both in terms of its political support and its, its military support, uh, or at least weapon sales. Uh, but uh, it's in many ways an unexercisable power because also is quite popular in the United States in principle to support Israel, even while so many Americans do condemn the way Israel has been uh, killing so many uh, Gaza Palestinians and, and West Bank Palestinians, by the way. I mean, a lot of people looking on will be asking that question. Why doesn't the U.S. intervene? You said it, it gives money to Israel, it provides weapons to Israel. Why not pull on those levers? Is it about self-interest back at home politically? In part, of course, absolutely. As I said, the you know support for Israel is, is very popular across the United States political spectrum. It's not just the American Jewish community. But also there's, I think, a deep recognition in the United States having reacted as it did to the terror attacks on it in this city and in Washington, D.C. and in Pennsylvania, uh, September 11, 2001, that uh, Israel does have a right uh, to, to respond vigorously to, to try to destroy the terrorist organization that inflicted what we all know is the worst, the highest loss of Jewish life since the Holocaust. And if you look at the, you know, you look at the comparison per capita of civilian deaths in the U.S. in September 11th versus per capita Israel on October 7th, uh, it's many times an order of magnitude higher in Israel. So I think there's genuine sentiment across the U.S. political spectrum that Israel has a right and maybe a need to destroy uh, Hamas's ability to repeat what it did. However, having said that, there's also very strong sentiment right here in this city at Columbia University and others uh, that what looks like indiscriminate targeting of civilians uh, is is illegal, is a, is a war crime. Now, Israel would, and Israeli officials say, look, if you look at the ratio of civilians killed per, per terrorist, you know, killed, uh, it's quite low in terms of urban conflict. Uh, but I think that's a hollow argument when we see such utter devastation and suffering and near famine uh, among the poor, horribly suffering uh, Palestinians in Gaza. If, if you look at the accusations that are made against um, the Israeli military, there's a long list, but let's just start with claims of genocide, um, blocking humanitarian aid, um, the killing of aid workers, killing of journalists. I mean, yeah. the fact that Israel has moved its military focus from Gaza, where it's, it's been operating unabated for almost a year now. It's now moving on to Lebanon. It's attacking a, a sovereign state. And no country seems to be intervening in a manner that will make any, any difference. Is there a danger now that Israel will just think, no one's stopping us. We can do whatever we want at this point and take out all of our enemies? Uh, I think that is what, what uh, Netanyahu wants to do. He wants to try to destroy uh, Hezbollah's ability to wage war on Israel. And Hezbollah is much better equipped and much larger than Hamas. So I, yeah, I think uh, Netanyahu, as you suggest, has decided uh, this is time. It's time. We, we, we're already, we've gone so far. We're so condemned internationally. Uh, now is the time. If not now, when will he ever be able to destroy uh, Hezbollah as well as Hamas? And uh, I think that the recent attacks uh, on uh, Hezbollah's leadership has devastated the ability to run the organization, as did the exploding uh, communications devices. And I think there's a lot of fear in Hezbollah right now. But I also think there's a more sinister potential Israeli uh, motive at play. It's not to seize territory or take control of Lebanon, uh, but I, 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 I do think there's a, a, a desire, yeah, to make sure uh, that in the case of Israel, that Palestinians are forced out of Gaza 
uh, and, and maybe out of the West Bank, and where they go is an absolute mystery. I, I can't imagine what the answer to that question is. Mr. Ambassador, busy time for you, I'm sure, right now in New York, so appreciate you taking the time to um, speak to us. It's the former U.S. Ambassador Matthew Breiser, uh, former ambassador to Azerbaijan, speaking to me this hour. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks. Great to be with you.